exercise nine. In this exercise, we're going to take Inventor, make a model, and then bring the model through import methods into Mastercam, which is a computer aided manufacturing software. And from there, we'll go ahead and generate some toolpads off the faces of the 3D model. Just to give you a preview, here we have the model we're going to build, and then we're going to go ahead and import it into Mastercam. And as you can see here, we have a tool path generated for the different pockets as well as the holes. And at any time, we could go and verify this. And actually see it generating our model. So let's begin. Uh, we, you're provided a print, and we're going to go ahead and follow this print and create this model. So we see it's a 4x4 four four square. It's one inch thick, and it has a couple pockets and some holes. So let's begin with the new part. Select the XY plane and start your sketch. Take the rectangle tool, the corner rectangle, and start at the origin and drag out a 4x4 four four square. Go to 3D model, extrude it, and we want to extrude this one inch thick. Select this face and start a new sketch. We'll proceed to draw in some of the bosses, the holes I should say. So I'm going to draw a circle here, which is going to be actually let me bring my print here. It's going to be a half inch by three quarters deep, and this will be 0.25 by the same depth. 0.5, and then the next hole, approximately there, 0.25. And there's a larger hole over here, which is going to be 1 inch. Actually, we'll put that in later because that's a, a different depth. So we can put these out and put our dimensions in. And this is going to be dimension a half inch off this edge. Actually, it's three quarters of an inch. And then off this edge, dimension to the center point the same. This one's going to be dimension off of this edge, just 1.25. And then from the center point to this bottom edge, will be 1.375. Now these two holes, since they're the same depth, we can can actually cut them together. So if we go to 3D model, let's rotate this a little bit, go to extrude, select the two holes, flip them, make sure remove material, the cut is selected, and type in 0.75. I'm going to turn on my edges and shadows. Okay, now we'll go ahead and put the pockets in. So let's start a sketch here. And the next circle is just floating around here, approximately. This is going to be one inch. And then it's going to be dimensioned from the center point to this bottom edge, 0.75. And then from the center point to this right edge, it's going to be 1.125. The next thing we have is a rectangle over here, and this is going to be 1.5 by 1.5. And then we could dimension it to the edges, 0.5. Uh, 
my 0.5. All right, and we'll put the fillets in afterwards. The radius is our typical 0.25. And then this next sketch, which is actually the shape that we see here, we can generate that using some circles and locating the positions of the three corners. And they're all going to be 0.5 diameter. All right, and at this point we can add those dimensions between them. And this is dimension off of the base here of 2.059. And then this one is dimension to the base as well. The baseline dimension of 3.25. And this one gets aligned with it. So we can actually use a horizontal relationship, selecting both centers. Now as far as locating these, this is going to be located off of this edge, 0.5. And these two are going to be, this will, the next one is dimension off of this edge, by one. 0.345 and this one is aligned to that so let's go ahead and use a vertical constraint and select both centers. Now we could go to the line tool and off the quadrants here we'll draw these tangent same with these This one will get tangency on that one as well. Now just make sure that this is tangent to that by hold by going up to the tangent option, selecting the circle and the line to make sure they're tangent. Now we could trim that information out. So we could go ahead and click on this, this, and that. And so now we have our pocket. At this point, we go to 3D model, extrude. Select the three entities, reverse them, and these only go a half inch deep. And at this point, I wanted to put those fillets in there, so I go to 3D model, fillet, and 0.25. And just select the four edges. I could have added them in as a sketched fillet as well. And there's our model. Now we just need to save it. And we'll call this E9. And I could close it. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up Mastercam. I'm going to go to File Open. And I left it on my desktop. So I'm going to look for, under here, Files of Type. Find Autodesk Inventor, it's on the list. Autodesk Inventor Files. And you'll find E9. Hit the green check mark. And there we have it. Now that it's in Mastercam, we can turn on the shaded mode up here. Click on this little arrow here. Find sh Outlined Shaded. And you can rotate it around. Now, I don't like the big, the fluorescent green very much. So I'm going to click on this little arrow right next to that shaded outline and go to shade settings. This brings up some dialog and we could select a, a different color over here. We could select color or you could actually select materials. I'm not too fond of the materials are very dark that we see. And then over here I'm just going to select this color right here. It's like a teal, a darker teal. A little bit easier on the eyes. Okay.
Now over here on the left, we have some information. We could go ahead and hit the little plus symbol next to the properties. And let's go to stock setup. Now stock setup, your best bet in this case is just to go with all solids. And then as far as the additional information um, on this, we're pretty much set up. And we could go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Now you should see red edges showing up. That's because it made it to the stock size. Now the interesting thing about that is that we're not going to face this. We're assuming that this is already faced and brought down to our tolerance already. And then so it's just a matter of plugging in this part into the vise and hit and play. One of the things I meant to select there in the stock setup was the material type. That's actually found under the tool settings. So basically the way I got here, I just clicked on stock setup. And then down at the bottom, you'll see it's set to aluminum 2024. Let's change that. Let's go to, uh, not edit, I'm sorry, go to select. And this dialog box comes up. Instead of the mill current options, go to the mill library. And here we can find aluminum 6061 from this library. Hit apply and hit the green check mark. Now the next thing we're going to do is, we're, since we have all this set up, we can now go ahead and go to tool paths and we're going to start with our drills first. So go to drill and it's going to automatically enter a new NC name. Just hit, uh, let it go with the default of E9, hit the green check mark. And now this dialog pop, uh, pops up. What we're going to do is select the two holes, and you want to make sure you get the bases. So a middle dragging, and just zoom up with the scroll, and click on this bottom surface here, and hit the green check mark. We're going to do one at a time. And then over here we have the drill option. Make sure that's selected. We have the tool that we have to select, so we could click on Select Library. In this case, it's going to be, uh, we want to make sure we select a drill that is a, um, half inch diameter. And there we go. Hit apply. And you could go down further. You could go to the holder, cut parameters. If you wanted to dwell and set up pecking and a lot of different things in here that you could go to. Um, right now we're just gonna basically leave like most of these things untouched and just hit the green check mark. Now we're gonna go ahead and add another one. So go to tool paths and go back to drill and select the floor of this pocket here. And you see the edges of the floor light up yellow, you know you've got it. And then a little cross here turns goes in the center. The check mark. Again, make sure all this is selected. Now the tool for this one's going to be different. So we're going to select from the library and we want to make sure we select a 0.25 or a quarter inch. Check mark there and apply. All right, now we want to go ahead and put some uh, address those pockets. So go to tool path and pocket. Go to 3D and click on this little solids button. All you have to do is select the floor of each pocket. They turn yellow. Hit the green check mark. We want pocket. The tool we're going to go ahead and select from our library, and in this case, uh, the typical radius on the edges is 0.25, so we need a half inch, at least a half inch diameter will be most efficient here. So, and it needs to be flat. So, a half inch flat base, not a ball end, so be careful that. And hit the OK. And the cut parameters, we'll uh, leave this basically, most of these things we could leave alone. For roughing, we could select zigzag or constant overlap spiral or parallel spiral. We'll go with constant overlap. For finishing, we just leave this um, untouched. We're not going to change any or modify anything in here, but we could if we wanted to adjust the feed rate and things like that. We have lead in, lead out, how you want to have that 
work. I'm going to go with the defaults once again. The linking parameters, again, the defaults are we're, we're going to stick with. If we wanted to, though, we could adjust these types of things for retraction. If we want absolute or incremental values, and as well as home reference point. We want coolant turned on, things like that. We could. In this case, it's going to be made. This is a, we're not going to use coolant on this. So hit OK. So it should have generated our tool paths. And now up here, we could go ahead and just click on the very top of machine group one. And I'll click on verify selected operation. Change the speed so it's a little bit uh, higher quality in terms of high quality. And then this is the speed. You want to slow it down, drag this to the left, maybe about a quarter of the way. And we're going to go ahead and we have the uh, simulate tool. Just hit play. And we could see the drills going in. And then the milling of our pocket. In our triangular pocket and then our hole. And then the, this is the finishing process. And we are done. When you're ready, you could click on post and you could output this to your G code. And this concludes exercise 9.